I'm Leticia. I just bought my first home and I am DIYing my way through my renovations and decor. So be sure to subscribe for updates for the house. I had a bunch of junky containers that I was about to throw out, but decided to do a fun challenge with my friend Tina, a fellow DIY YouTuber. Tina has insanely creative ideas for her DIYs, so be sure to check out her video after watching mine. She's almost to 100k, so if you guys can help out, subscribe to her channel as well. So each of us are taking things that we would normally throw out in the trash and turning it into treasure! So let's get started! I was actually in the market for a coffee can and decided to jazz up this one. Funny enough, I actually don't have a printer at home. So I used my Cricut to cut out lettering I made to tape onto the can. The McCafe one is perfect because it's a stiff cardboard. Shout out to McDonald's breakfast and coffee, hash browns for life. I spray painted my can white and made a huge mistake of catching a piece of paper and peeling upwards. At this point, I didn't really know what kind of design I wanted on my can, but the reason for my cutout letters is because I'm adding plastic backing to it. I want to be able to easily see how far along we are on our coffee consumption. We drink it every day, so it's good to know if we're running low. I poured the beans in to see color-wise what I wanted to work with, and then from there I kind of went through a color scheme that went through the entire video. This is an instant upgrade for your counter from store-bought bags to aesthetic design with a purpose. It's a literal translation of the old coffee can. I think I love to find ways to bring a current item to fit my style and needs. The clear cutout is such a useful feature to quickly check if we're on our way to the grocery store and need to know if we need to top up on coffee. Hello! <laughs> I'm really happy with mine. This is like my first time working with this material and like I'm kind of obsessed now, so... You show me yours first, I want to see. Oh my god. Okay, how about I show you and then you tell me what you think I made it out of. Yes! Okay, I was gonna say that. Oh! Oh! The bottom of a bottle! Yes! Did you use oh, concrete? I, yeah, I used concrete really hot as it's like curing. So like as I was touching it, like it was like burning hot and then I just waited until it cooled. I was like, I feel like Letitia could have this marbled one in her place. I would 100%. I would have both of those at my place. I'm super excited to see what your projects turn out like. Thank you. I'm so excited to see yours. Good luck with the rest of your DIYs. Good luck too. I'll see ya. Bye. Bye. When I ate Ferrero Rocher as a kid, it was such a treat and we would keep the wrappers and smooth it out and clean it and keep it for crafts. The boxes were always kept and you know these boxes are highly prized when there are YouTube videos on how to remove the center label. It's not a peelable sticker and I used a gel face cleanser to scrape it off. It still left scratch marks though, but it's fine because I'm going to be priming the entire box to be painted. The box is perfectly made for the trendiest and my favorite pattern right now, checkerboard. We're bringing back the lavender as the main color for the checker, roughly painting in the squares. For the second color of off-white, I used painter's tape to get clean lines. While that's drying, I have a piece of upholstery foam cut to size, and I marked off lines that I cut into with an X-Acto knife. Then spray painted the foam and the bottom of the box with lavender spray paint. Once everything is dried, I painted an orange border on the box. If you've guessed by now that it's a jewelry box, you get a cookie! I've tried this color combo on my nails before, and I think it works in some instances, but I don't think this is what I was aiming for, so I did a quick switch. The final result, however, is so sweet. If you have pre-made jewelry foam lying around, this is a great way to upgrade it to add some personality. The box looks great closed or open. It goes well with all my other checked home decor items, and there's no such thing as overkill. When I get to the bottom of a kennel jar, I always melt the little bit of wax left over and keep the container. It's doubling the use of your decor items and you just clean it off with a bit of Goo Gone and you have it looking new. First, I rolled out three little air dry clay balls, scoring the bottom and setting aside to dry. I'm painting daisies on this and the container can be used for candles or a cute planter. When your wee balls are dry, glue them to the base of your jar. I taped off the bottom and spray painted, you guessed it, lavender. 
It's a shame to recycle high quality glass and if you have a ton of candle jars like me, you can find cute ways to craft and give them to your friends. As a candle holder, the daisies cast lovely little shadows and as a planter, this is a lovely coffee table addition. It's always inspiring to collaborate with other creators. I think it pushes me and challenges me. I've only seen one of Tina's DIYs so far, so I'm going to go check out her video as well to see what she did for the rest of them. Please don't forget to like the video, it's right there. And if you enjoyed, you can find me on all social at Letitia Q. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.